Happy Wednesday, Eagles Nation. What's going on? Views from LA TV, Weekly Chirp, Stephen Elmer alongside Tom Oresco, and uh, we're inching ever so closer to the uh, to date, March 9th. It's coming. Yeah, it's and, coming uh, up, and um, you know, I'm excited for what it. What a time to be alive. Yeah, but the problem is Drake's More Life got pushed back again. Um, apparently, a rumor came out today that it's over 30 songs long, which would be absolutely absurd. You're it's never going to stop listening to it. I'm just going to hear that every day. Yeah. Well, Probably until the Eagle season starts. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Uh, it got pushed back again, but, um, you know, it's it's okay because, you know, the drafts uh, are free agency March 9th, so hopefully it comes out a little after free agency, maybe like around free agency. Right. We'll see what happens. But when free agency rolls around, that's, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to now and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think yeah. that there's going to be rumors flying around, and uh, you know, guys like Jamal Charles and Adrian Peterson are free agents, and you know yeah. they're old, but teams teams will think you know same thing yeah. that uh, Miami thought with Aaron Foster's. Maybe they can get one more year out of the guys, or maybe yeah. even two from Adrian. But um, I, just I, I, I doubt it. Um, I don't see the Eagles going after this guy. Maybe Charles because I, I don't. Familiarity. Think they have a lot of tread on their tires, and I think that the only reason you'd bring Jamal Charles in. You'd work him out, you'd see what he's got, see if he's healthy. And the only reason you'd bring him in, you'd bring him in on a one-year deal, and it would be to share some carries with a rookie running back. Yeah. Um, and that would that would be the only way you could bring a guy like that in. Because if you go get a guy like Latavius Murray, mm -hmm. who a lot of people are talking about the Eagles, I mean, wanting for the Eagles, and I just, I don't see it. I don't want him. Who knows? Yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. really, I don't really want him um, either. But if you get a guy like that, he's your starter. You know, yeah. he's, your, he's your every down yeah. back. But, but if you get Jamal Charles, and it's like, okay, well, we'll see what he can give us. And, you know, if he gets hurt, he get, it's almost like you have to, you have to yeah. the bottom line is you have to get him with the thought, he's going to get hurt, so what's our backup plan? But if he doesn't, then you have a really good player. I don't player, think Jamal you know? Charles because you got Sproles already. You got a Sproles like, is very not, similar no, players. No, Sproles is not uh, somebody that you can call, like, a true spell back or even a, a guy who can he can't take the ball twenty times. He yeah, well, ball, he yeah, yeah, ball yeah but Jamal Charles is not taking the ball twenty times a game for us. Exactly, which is why you need to take a you need yeah. to get a rookie running back that can We get, don't need another you know, complimenting back. We need a feature back. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's well, what we get. However however we kind of do need a complimentary back and the Sproles is not unless you want Smallwood to be your primary backup running back with a rookie, I just think I look. I don't want Jamal Charles, but I don't think it would be that bad of a pickup to yeah. have in in a running back room with a rookie. Because if that rookie isn't a Dalvin Cook or a Leonard Fournette who could likely start day one, and it's more of a Joe Mixon who's kind of got you know character issues, yeah. you get him. If they get him in the second or third round, and they really like him, but that you know he's he's going to drop yeah. because of his character issues, um, you know, or even even a even an Alvin Kamara or, you know, some other running yeah. back later in the draft that's not, you know, so polished. I like Jamal Williams a lot. Um, Jamal Williams is yeah. another guy. Um, you know, having a guy like Jamal Charles isn't a bad idea. And Sproles, I mean, that's a that's a, that's a strong, pretty strong yeah. running back room to have your, your future in the running back at draft being the guy you want to start going forward, you know, after this year. And then you have Charles. And look, if he doesn't give you anything, then you're in pretty much the same situation. You got to rely on a rookie and Sproles. Mm. So I mean, and Smallwood. So I mean, yeah, I don't think Charles would be the worst pickup. And no. if he can give you a little production, it adds a, a weapon that maybe can give you, you know, one more solid year. We don't even you know we wouldn't we couldn't rely on him to go for a thousand. Mm. But if he can give you, you know, a good complimentary back to the rookie and let the rookie ease in, kind of like we do with everybody uh, in yeah. uh, in this regime. We've let guys ease in, other than really Carson Wentz. But um, yeah. you know, Jalen Mills had to get in there because injury, and that's the thing. If Charles gets injured, then your your rookie has to step right in there. But you know, for as long as possible, maybe you know, get some get some guys in there that can kind of pave the way for certain guys. It's it's yeah. kind of you know, it's like we always talk about. It's building for the future and uh, having a chance in the present as well. So we want to. You know, do do both of those things, and uh, yeah. the same thing goes for a receiver. And uh, you know, give him the daily reminder about uh, bringing Alshon Jeffrey. That's just that's just what I see. If you went on Twitter and started saying that on my account and said, "Hey, this I hijacked Tom's account. This is Steve. I got this opinion, and I'm going to put it out there. The Eagles are getting Alshon Jeffrey. You would get flamed." 
People do not think there's any chance we get Alshon and Jeffrey on Twitter. Yeah. There's no chance. So what do you what do you got to say to those type of people? What do I say to those people? And they don't even want them. They don't even, they're like, they, you know, they're kind of against it. Yeah. As you pointed out earlier, there's a lot of fans that are against it. Yeah, and I just, I, want, I, want, I really yeah, don't do understand what the, okay, the, okay, there's a price tag for them, but what? Okay, so you're going to pay stills, I, they say 12 million, I don't see it. You're going to pay stills 10 million? You might as well just get give them fifteen. You might as well just give the extra five. Get a player that's much better. He's twenty, just turned twenty-seven years old. So look at it this way: if you had a receiver entering his prime, or you know had had a bunch of good years, the man's eye contract, like Antonio Brown, who got his extension yesterday, you would sign him. Mm-hmm. The only difference is Alshon Jeffrey hit free agency and wasn't on your team. Yeah, he didn't produce for you, so you're like you know you're a little unknown to him. However, if he was on your team. You'd be giving him the same contract that he'd be getting if um, he stayed with the Bears. Yeah. And that's just how it works. So a player like Alshon Jeffrey never, ever hits free agency. So this is when and when you need him as badly as the Eagles do in a year where that was the worst receiving core I have ever seen. <laughs> ever. Ever. Any team is the worst receiving core I've ever seen. Since. There's been a and lot I've of been bandages, watching, but they were I've at been least watching bottom three in the NFL, and you can't argue that. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. I have not seen... And since I started watching football, when McNabb took the Eagles to the playoffs in 2000, I have not seen, and that receiving core was really bad. And, and the thing is, it's, it's been two years now. It's the same mm. guys. It's Matthews, yeah, and Aguilar, not, and then, I mean, Cooper and DGB were yeah. around. You know, the, These guys were horrendous. Yeah. They're horrendous. And you, you need a receiver. Alshon Jeffrey would make the biggest impact on his, on the Eagles more than any other team right now. Yeah, yeah okay, there's, there's reports there's of the Titans. There's Alshon no. Jeffrey might be, arguably be the, out of any team in the league, he might be the biggest upgrade in the NFL. Yeah. Out of all the player acquisitions that are going to happen this offseason, is there any one player that would yeah. be a, a bigger margin of impact than Alshon Jeffrey on the Philadelphia Eagles? No, exactly. Not no, at all. No way. So that's why that's why I think you get him. Because you, I think you the only need rival him. to that would be if Alshon Je- um, if Alshon Jeffrey went to the uh, maybe back to the Bears. Yeah, because they're just because <laughs> they're so they're going to be the worst. Core in the league or the Niners. Yeah, but you just—they just need him so badly. Uh, and Rebus that's just why. Today. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 Marshall might too, which is why you know I. Yeah. To, but yeah, uh, you know. No, you, wrap, you, wrap it up with Alshon. Yeah, I mean you—you know, you never need a receiver this badly, and the fact that one of his caliber is hitting the market, which happens once every 10, 15, Last time a receiver hit the market like this was T.O. and because he talked his way out of out of town. Yeah, yeah, he was. So, you know, and Alshon isn't like T.O. and he's no, not no. Antonio Brown. But look, the bottom line is, you know, is he going to be worth the amount of money he yes, makes? He's going to. For, on the Eagles, yeah. yeah. On the Eagles, yes. Is on, on the, the, is the stat sheet going to say it? no? But what he's going to do for the rest of the team, absolutely. So you yeah. just go get him. Exactly. That's all I have to say. You need you need him so badly, and you just get him. Yeah. And if, if not, then it's got to be two guys like. What else you spend money on? Yeah, it could be a corner. Yeah, but you need wide receiver more than any other yeah. position. Yeah, right I, I think I think that the development and progression of Wentz is more important. Exactly. Than, than any. He's gonna help solving with. corner right away yeah. or anything like that. And you know, I had a couple people on Twitter say that that's you know not true. Um, to me today uh, or yesterday, you know, probably probably both days because yeah. people tell me things aren't mm-hmm. true all the time. But look, I bring points to the table, and when you just come and say that's not true, well, give me a reason why. Mm-hmm. Um, I bring points to the table that are logical. Here's my thinking: you traded up for Carson Wentz. Now, yes, we did. We, you know, we did retain a lot of those picks. Yeah, we, we, we recouped a lot of them. Yeah. However, you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that that's how bad they wanted Carson Wentz. They they traded up to two to get this guy. So, as soon as you possibly can, you need to get him guys yeah. around him. You need to get an offensive line in front of him that's going to protect him. You need to get a running back that he yeah. can rely on. You need to get another running back that's good, too, because, you know, you need a couple of weapons in your backfield. You need yeah. to get a tight end that he develops chemistry with, mm-hmm. and you need to get wide receivers yeah. that we don't have. And if you don't get all those things, this guy's going to be playing like this forever. And we're going to be saying the same thing that people said about all the other quarterbacks that didn't have enough around him throughout their career. Sam Bradford, mm-hmm. uh, Derek, or David Carr, Derek Carr's little uh, older brother, yeah. played for the Texans, was in the worst situation. And who knows if those guys would ever have been good? Yeah. Who knows? But that's the same thing we're going to be wondering about Carson Wentz 
a couple years yeah. down the road, if we don't, if we yeah, go get yeah. corners and linebackers and all yeah. these all these cool guys that like, yeah, they're cool, but like, just wait. There's gonna be more cool guys down the road. Yeah. We need to get you the, the guys around Carson Wentz. Yeah. He's what our team's gonna be based on. Yeah. How good he is, and then obviously the defense. But you have to realize that our defense isn't that bad right now. It's got no, a it's framework. Yeah. So, you know, obviously cornerback has to be solved. There's a draft for that. You can draft, you know, a bunch of good corners this year. Draft yeah. a couple of them. Receiver and, and running back are positions you need to prioritize. And offensive line. Those are the positions yeah. you need to prioritize in free agency and in the draft high, in, yeah. high, in the high rounds. Because you need to hit on someone. You need to get a guy in that yeah. first round that's going to make immediate impact. And I think Corey Davis could be one of those guys, but Dalvin Cook and Leonard Fournette yeah. are a hundred percent guys that you can give the ball to and they'll make plays. Yeah. So I'm going to leave, we're going to get out of here guys, but I'm going to leave you with this. There was a huge reason why they were going to start Sam Bradford last year because they didn't feel comfortable with these weapons and last, they didn't want to ruin Great Wentz. point. That's they didn't want to no ruin Wentz. Has brought up, but when and they got they, that first rounder, yeah, they, they couldn't were like, say no. Yeah, they were no. not yeah. going to start. Chase and I Stan. remember, I remember, I, I woke you up that morning. And I was like, the, the morning we traded him, and I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, with these offensive line, I don't feel comfortable with them. But I was like, they got a first round pick, had to do it. Yeah, had to. And do it. And that's why, because they, and that's why they're going to get mm-hmm. them weapons, and that's why we're going to. And get and, and, and I bet they didn't. I bet they knew Wentz was good, but I don't think they thought he was like as good as he yeah. actually was. Yeah. And. When they saw that, it probably made it a little easier because they knew like his attitude and his yeah. presence, and like if this kid can just stay healthy this year, yeah. we will load up next year. Yeah. That's probably what they and, thought, and that's what they're and, and, and he did, and and that's and that's a great point is that they they wanted to start Sam Bradford more probably because to protect them, and then they did probably think Wentz was going to be really good. They didn't think he would be like yeah. crazy like this presence that he has, but like. They knew that, like, if Bradford goes down or something happens, yeah. that they could they could they probably need, they put need Carson the Wentz the offense, in there, yeah. you know? And, but when they had to trade him, they were like, look, we're going to roll with Wentz. It's probably not going to be the best year, but we are going to load up. How he tried. He was scrambling. He got DGB. Yeah. It tried him out. He was talking about Torrey Smith potentially, but probably didn't want to give up the picks and just mm-hmm. said, you know what? We'll we'll take we'll take, we'll, 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 yeah. we'll we'll take we'll take the hit yeah. on the chin this year and we're gonna go load up next year. And, yeah. You know that's that's a great point and I'm gonna that's going right on Twitter tomorrow. So uh, you know <laughs> there you have it's, it. It's it's that simple. This is going on Twitter I'm gonna, today, tomorrow, the next day. Boom. That is a great. I just like myth busted why why we're gonna get Alshon Jeffrey. All right, guys. I'll yeah, see we'll much. see you guys for um, Burbuzz later in a week. Have a great day.